In schools today, you learn computer stuff in a computer class and you learn history stuff in a history class. Well, in the school of the future, maybe you'll be learning history using computers. Not just reading about the past, but actually tinkering with it, making your own projects, figuring out ways to explore how the world used to be by using the tools that you have now. Now, when most people think about Scratch, they think about creating their own video games or animation, maybe doing some digital designs. What we're gonna do today is design something that looks like it's from the past, using actual photographs from history. So to start, I'd like to show you what we're gonna be able to build by the end of our time together. So if you go to scratch.mit.edu and search for Anne Frank, you'll see a lot of different projects. What I did is I created a studio called the Anne Frank Project Studio where I put my favorite Anne Frank projects. Now, if you look at this studio, there are six projects, but two of them look very similar. They both have the name collage. So let's open the first one. And I wanna fill the screen with that project so you can really see what it's about. So I'm gonna click the top left-hand corner. And look. We have a beautiful young girl in the foreground. We have her name underneath, Anne Frank. And 1929 to 1945 is the years that she lived. Now above her shoulder, what do you see? Can you see that page of a book that looks handwritten with a picture? That's Anne Frank's famous diary that was published after she died. And people all over the world have been reading this diary for decades to learn more about the time that she lived in. Beneath that diary is a Jewish star, a symbol that some people were forced to wear during World War II, including people related to Anne Frank. Notice how you can sort of see through Anne Frank. She's transparent. And behind her, you can see books on one side and a house with brick wall on the other side. What a collage does so well is it brings lots of different images together to provide some sort of story that means more than the individual pictures mean. So what if we could create a collage just like this about anybody in history as a way to show what we've learned? Well, it would be cheating if I showed you the inside of my collage. So I thought what I could do is create a new scratch project that has photographs that you could start with, the same photographs that I'm using, and I'll show you some scratch techniques, a few of them are secrets, that'll allow you to create a really cool collage of your own. It doesn't have to be about Anne Frank, but it might be a good idea to follow along, and then once you understand how to do it, you can make your collage be about anything. So I'm gonna go back to Scratch. I just wanna make sure you know how to find that studio. Anne Frank. Aj Project, let's see if you can spot what's different. I'll go full screen. Now look, that star is taking up most of the stage. We can only see half of the girl in the background and almost nothing else. So this is what it looks like when I brought a bunch of photos in and hadn't made any changes yet. So if you go to the studio and open the collage starter project, then click see inside, you'll see we have one, two, three, four, five, six images to start with. So what I'd like to show you is some techniques for changing these images, making some of them smaller, cutting out the edges, and finding the best way to combine them. Remember that transparency that we saw with Anne Frank? How do we make some objects transparent so that we can see other ones coming from behind? That's what we're gonna do in Scratch. So once you have this project open, 
Now, I find it hard to work with all of these photographs at once because I can only see one or two of them. So let's hide some of them. When I select one, do you see the little eye in the corner? If I click on that eye, see where it says show? I'll just uncheck the box. And I'll go to the next one, uncheck the box, and the next, and the next. Until I only have one left. Now this one isn't there. Until I only have one left. But the final one isn't showing up. I haven't hidden it yet. So that means one of them was already hidden. It's really important when you open up a scratch project to look and see how many images you have and how many are on the stage because you may have some extra sprites, extra photographs hidden. I need to decide which one should we start with. Well, the diary pages are the easiest one, I think. So I'm going to click on the diary pages sprite. And to show it, I'll just click on the eye again and check show. Click that blue arrow to go back. Now look, it's off to the side. So I'm going to click and drag on the stage, click and drag so that I can see the photograph actually fills the entire stage. So if I had this page and I didn't make any changes, I wouldn't be able to see anything else behind it. So what we want to do is cut out the book. How do we do that? If I click on the Costumes tab, I have all my familiar painting tools. And a really important one is the eraser. I'll drag my slider to make the eraser bigger. And then I can click and drag. Click and drag. But I don't know about you, I'm having trouble really getting to the edge of those pages. I wonder if there's a special way to get closer to the book. Let's get rid of all this on the edge. Back to the top, click and drag. and drag back. Now one trick that I like to use is if you're using a big trackpad, you might want to hold the trackpad with one thumb in a corner and then you can just naturally move the cursor with your finger like finger painting. So that's pretty good. It's okay to leave a little bit of that darkness near the bottom. It sort of comes across being like a shadow. If I go too close, it doesn't look real anymore as soon as I go that close. Now, I want to undo what I just did. So I will click the undo button. If you're not sure what a button is, just hold your cursor for a moment on any of the buttons and then you'll see that description that pops up that tells you like we do here, undo. So I'm going to undo and now we have that back. You could spend as much time as you want getting into the fine details, but I think for now it's important to just do sort of a rough draft. We'll come back later because maybe we're only going to show half the book. Remember when we saw that diary in the collage before, we were only seeing one page. So I don't want to spend too much time going around that extra page if I don't need to. When I look at the stage, I notice there's still a little bit left down near the bottom. So I'll just go back and remove that. Then on the stage, I'm going to click that book and drag it a little bit off to the side. So if we just wanted one page, we might as well put it there now. 
and then eventually we can set the scale, we can resize the elements to fit together better. But it's hard to know how big the diary should be until we have some other photographs in our collage. So maybe I should have one of the ones that's, that's going to be in the background. Do you remember what was in the background on one side? How about the bookshelves? Now this bookshelf is very important because actually this shelf was used to hide the door to get into the apartment where this family was staying. So we want to make sure that you can really see that it's not just a few books, but that it's an entire bookshelf. So I think it's important that we see it vertically rather than just apart horizontally. But I don't want to use the eraser now because look how precise those edges are on the bookcase. If I use the eraser, it's going to be a little bit jagged like we are on the diary. So why don't we try another tool that will let us remove a very set portion with straight edges. The select tool. The select tool not only lets me select part of an image, but I can also remove whatever it is that I've selected. So if I select here, ah, but I'm having trouble. I'm having trouble because it's vertical, but the bookshelves are a little bit slanted. So for now, I'll click delete to remove that portion over there. And you can start a little bit off the photo just to the left or right and go. So I'm clicking, dragging, and then delete. Yes, I still have those extra areas where I want a diagonal, but I can fix the one on the right really easily. Look. Depending on where you place your bookcase on the stage, what if we move it so that we only see the wood? So I'm clicking and dragging. Now it's okay that this area wasn't removed. But I do still see an area on the side. So let's try one of my tricks. Where we choose color, you probably recognize all the colors. We've been seeing colors for our entire lives. But what about this one in the top right corner? It's white with a red line through it. If I click on it, and let me just show you how it works. I'm going to grab a rectangle and drag. A rectangle and drag. Ah, it's not letting me do anything because that's empty. The rectangle and most of the other tools in Bitmap let you draw with color. If you choose an empty color, it doesn't know how to draw because there's no color to place there. So what we might want to do is figure out, is there some way that we could draw parts of straight lines and then remove the color afterwards? Unfortunately, we can't do it in this view. Bitmap graphics don't let us get really precise with the tools that we have there. So maybe we should try using some other tools that let us draw precise lines and then either change the color or remove the color altogether. To do that, we're going to have to learn vector graphics. Now, because the bookcase, it's only a little edge that's there, I'm going to leave that for now. Because chances are, look, couldn't I just move that diary, being a little bit tricky here, just moving that diary to just over the part that I wanted to get rid of? That's a good solution. I think that works because the bookshelves are in the background. But what about if we have a more advanced shape like a star. Or even more advanced, like a person. How do we get rid of the part of the photograph that isn't Anne Frank? So if I show her, right now she's behind some of those other photographs. So watch, 
I'm going to click on the Anne Frank sprite and drag. When you click and drag, it brings a photograph or any other sprite to the front or top layer of what you're working on. So see what I mean now? We have this extra gray around her head. We don't want that. We want to be able to see what's behind her. The gray isn't important. And if you remove it, it will look more professional. It blends in. So we could use the eraser like we did before. And we don't have to worry about straight lines with humans. It's all curves. So I'm going to grab the eraser. Let's start with the eraser really big and remove the parts that are easy to get to. So for instance, the corners. If I start at a corner, click and drag in, and slowly go along her hair, and then I'll remove the extra parts. So again, I'm just holding one thumb on the corner of the trackpad, and I'm using the other finger to move my tool precisely. So now we've pretty much cut out that one sort of swoop of hair. Let's go to the other side. I'll start at a corner. I'll drag in towards the hair. I don't want to get too close. I don't want to remove hair. I just want to get what's on the edge. Clicking and dragging. Clicking and dragging. That looks good. You don't want to erase too much at once. Because if I do and I click undo, if I make a little mistake at the end, if I spend all this time going all the way around and then it, I make a mistake and I click undo, it erases everything that I just did. So see, if I do undo now, it's just that one portion. Undo again, it's the other side. But I'm going to redo because I do want that removed and I want the other side removed. And let's click and drag and remove the rest of the major areas around her hair. Click and drag. I can scroll when I'm ready. Click and drag. But now I have a problem. Look at this area between the hair and the shoulder. My brush is too large to get in there. So how on earth do I erase smaller areas? You got the idea? I'll just make my eraser smaller. I'll click and drag, and it's showing me a preview of how big it's going to be. I don't want to go to the smallest size, because that's going to be more work, and I hate having to do more work. So I'm going to start with a medium eraser, and maybe I should zoom in. I'll click the magnifying glass once, so that I can see more of that area. And I'm going to move my cursor there. And look, it's still a little bit too big. So I'll make it just a bit smaller. Perfect. So now I will click and drag away from her face. And remove as much of that as I can. Then I'll make it a little smaller to get that smaller area in there and that smaller area in there and that smaller area in there. And because I'm a perfectionist, I might want to go even a little bit smaller to really get those fine details. It's the little details that really make a design or piece of art look professional. So now that corner looks really good. I'm just going to slowly scroll up and notice there's a little bit of room for doing better here. I'll get just a little bit bigger. And click and drag. Click and drag, click and drag. Now, can I tell you another secret? When someone looks at your collage, they don't know where every piece of hair is. So 
You don't have to preserve every little piece, but you do want some of those little pieces of hair. Otherwise, it looks like a hat. So we don't want it to look like Anne Frank was wearing a hat in this photograph. And it is a very famous photograph, so people would say, that's weird, I don't remember Anne Frank wearing a hat in any of those photographs. So just enough, and if I zoom out, it always looks better. That's one of the reasons I like working zoomed in, because I get that effect of zooming out and then, oh, okay, I was getting really critical when I was really far in, but this is what it's actually gonna look like. It's not gonna be that big. So the right side looks really good. Now we could do what we did before. We could drag her off to one side, but the collage is really about Anne Frank. So I think we should see all of her in a more central place. We call that composition what we're doing now. Composition is when you take elements and put them together. When you write a composition in English class, what you're doing is putting words and sentences and paragraphs together. For collage, we're putting images together. We're composing them. So let's quickly do the other side of the hair. I'll zoom in. Go back to a large brush because we still have a pretty large area down here. Then make it smaller to get into that fine area. And here. And as I'm making it smaller, I should probably zoom in even a bit more. So that I can also get these areas. Now you can spend as much time as you want to get as precise as you want. But today isn't about doing it so precisely. You saw how we did one side precisely. So I think this side is okay for now. And remember, Anne Frank is gonna be transparent. So we might not need as much detail, getting rid of as much of that white, because when it's transparent, maybe we'll be able to see through it. We'll look at that later. For now, we do have a cutout human head, which, is one of the hardest things to cut out on a computer with hair because of all that detail. And now you're doing it in Scratch for kids. So let's add another photograph. So another really important image to have in our collage is that Star of David. So I'm gonna click on the star, click the eye, and click Show but I can't see the Star of David. Even though it says show, it's not appearing on the stage because right now it's behind the other elements. Now I could drag the elements out of the way so that I could click the star and drag it and bring it to the front, but I kind of like where my elements are now. I like where my diary is. I like those shelves and I put on Frank in a very specific place. So let me show you another way to bring sprites to the front. I'm gonna go in the looks category and let's use one code block that lets you arrange where things are on layers. Near the bottom, look what we have. Go to front. Now, I don't need to drag it into my scripts area yet because I'm not sure exactly whether it's gonna be in the front or not. For now, I'll just click once on the block, go to front. And that brings that star all the way to the front of my collage. Of course, it also blocks all the beautiful work that I just did. So just like we cut out Anne Frank's extra room, we want to cut out around the star. But the star has a very similar problem to those bookshelves. Remember, it was easy to use the select tool to get straight edges but it was hard to do angles. So I wanna show you one of my favorite tricks for drawing precise angles and removing that part of a photograph. But we can't do it in bitmap mode. If I go to costumes, I don't wanna use the eraser because it's gonna be uneven, imprecise, and take extra time. So let me show you this trick. We're gonna convert 
that photograph to vector mode. Click Convert to Vector button. And watch what happens to the tools. They jump to the other side of the screen. And some of them are different tools than what we had before. Maybe we should just take a minute to look at how those tools work. Rather than doing it on this sprite, I'm going to create a new sprite by clicking on the paintbrush, click Convert to Vector, and I'll start with just a simple ellipse tool for drawing circles. I'm going to click and drag. If I hold the Shift key, it'll make a perfect circle. Whatever color I have selected, ah, whatever color I have selected. Remember, I still have that transparent color selected, i.e., no color. So I need to choose a color. I'll just choose a dark blue for now. Then I'm going to click and drag. And again, if I hold the Shift key, it'll make a perfect circle. So far, not so exciting. Let's fill it in by using the Color a Shape tool, or I often refer to it as a paint bucket, because it looks like a paint bucket that's being kind of leaned to one side. And I can fill that in. Paint bucket in vector mode even lets you change the color of an outline, which I really like. So if I change the color to black and put it right on the edge, I can have an outline. If I drag the slider, I can make that outline thicker or thinner. But here's what's really cool about the vector tools and why it's really important for cutting out our Star of David. If I click the reshape tool, do you see those dots that appear? Those are control points that let you modify a shape. You can sculpt in Scratch. Not only draw and paint, but sculpt. You don't think so? Watch. If I click on one of those points and drag, what happens? It changes the shape, just like if you're working with clay. You can click and drag, click and drag, click and drag, click and drag. Pretty cool, right? Well, if we do that with a square, click and drag, holding the shift key for a perfect square. I'm going to fill it in black. That's fine for now. I just want to show you this. What's the advantage of a square over a circle? Well, if you want to cut out straight edges on a star, a square is a really good way to do that. Because with this reshape tool, watch what I can do. I can grab one corner and drag it into another place. Now, wait a minute. Doesn't that look a little bit like part of a star? So we could create a shape to be the outside of the star using these vector tools. And then with one more trick, we can erase that part of the photograph. So I don't actually want this sprite in my collage. I'll use the scissors to delete it. Go back to my star. But there's a problem. I don't have enough room where I'm working right now to really see all of the star. Fortunately, in Scratch, there's a way that you can minimize the stage so that you can see more of the paint area or the scripts area. Just go to Edit, Small Stage Layout. There's also a little shortcut button here that'll let you do it, that little triangle between the stage and the sprites and the paint area and the scripts area. Now I have a lot more room to work with. I'm going to zoom out at first. We can zoom in when we're ready for the detail, but I'm going to start big with big things, big areas, so I don't have to be zoomed in as closely. I'm going to create a rectangle, but I want to make sure it's a solid rectangle, so I'm going to click the Solid option, and I don't want to make it black. It's very important that the color 
of this rectangle or square that you start with is a contrasting color, a color that's an opposite, that stands out really well against all the colors in the background of our photograph. So I don't want to make it orange or yellow because that's the star, and I don't want to make it, make it black or gray because that's that background. So let's go with green. And then I'm going to draw a rectangle. I'm going to start from the inside corner and draw out all the way off the stage because I want to make sure I get all of that background. Now watch. Let's zoom in a little bit so we just see this part. The reshape tool, grab a corner, click and drag to here. Now because there's a black outline that's been drawn all the way through the star, I don't want to go too far. Watch, if I go this far, then I'm removing the line and it won't fit. See, there's a line down beneath it. So I want to preserve that black line, that sort of, there's a, supposed to be a black border there. And I'll adjust this corner to make sure I'm also getting that black border so that we have a corner. And if I zoom out, now you'll see we have one area. Now let's do the same. Let's create some other shapes to fit those other areas. Another rectangle. Start in the middle. Start in the corner. Use the reshape tool to adjust. Ah, I accidentally clicked on a point instead of clicking and dragging. And do you see what happened? If you click on a point, it deletes the point. Fortunately, I can use my undo button and bring it back. But if you can delete a point on a vector graphic, probably a way to add points, don't you think? Be weird to delete points and not be able to add points. So watch, if we use that reshape tool, click once to select it, what if I click between points and drag? Ah, we add our own point. Very handy, especially when we get to that area that has two angles going. Want to see what I mean? Well, first let me finish this one. Click and drag. And again, I'm going off the bottom edge to get rid of all that. Now let's grab this middle area. How do we get rid of that middle area? Rectangle again, click and drag. Now, I want to put one point at a corner, one point down here, but I have that extra room. So let's create a new point. And notice I'm going right up into the other shape. That's totally okay because we're going to be erasing all that green. But this lets me precisely position. And then I can just drag these outer points all the way from one side to another. So now I really know that I'm getting that whole area, which is pretty cool. Now, that took a little bit of work, right? You shouldn't have to do every step every time. So what if we duplicate the stuff on one side and flip it around? Since a star is symmetrical, it's the same on both sides. Even though it won't be precisely the same, it'll save us a lot of time. We can just manipulate those points a little bit if we need to. So what I can do is with the select tool, You can click, if you hold the shift key, it lets you select multiple shapes in one spray. Or if you click and drag, I can show you that it's actually selected all three. I'm going to click delete. Now I only do that to show you 
that when you delete it, you still have the photograph behind it. We haven't merged the color with the photograph yet. That's gonna be the trick. So let me undo the delete so we have that again. Click and drag on the outside of these. Now I didn't do it quite close enough. You need to be very close, otherwise it doesn't know that you're trying to select. So I'm gonna go really close to that corner, click and drag. Release. Now see, it adds a button. A button that lets you group shapes together. So I'm gonna click the group button. Now, if I move that around, they all move together. But I don't wanna move it around. I need it to be right in the right place so we can delete it. So how do we duplicate it so that we copy it from one side to the other? The duplicate tool. It looks just like one of those old rubber stamps that you could stamp onto ink and then make patterns over and over again, which is a form of duplication. So using the duplicate tool, if I click and drag, I can bring it over here only look. It's the wrong way. We need to flip it or rotate it. Those geniuses at MIT thought, hmm, we should make a button for that. So look, if I have it selected, I can go up and there's a button called flip left right. If I click that button, ta-da. Now we'll drag it into position and it's not bad, but we do need to adjust it, especially this bottom part. See how off it is? Well, no problem. I'll just go back to my reshape tool, click on the part that I need to change, grab a control point, click on the part that I need to change, drag a control point, and I'll adjust these just a little bit. Not perfect. Oh, I do notice at the bottom, we're missing some of that border. So I'll drag to here and to here to reveal that black border. I think that's pretty cool. But we don't want green surrounding the star in the collage. We did this as a way to erase that whole outer area all with one click. Well, two clicks. The real trick is we need to convert it from vector mode to bitmap mode. So I'm gonna click it again, convert to bitmap. What that does is blends those vector graphics with the photograph behind it. So now it's all together. And it works just like bitmap graphics. It means if I grab my eraser, and drag it through, I can erase both the green and the star. But I don't want to erase both the green and the star, just the green. So I'm going to undo. And remember what I said about this empty color? Select the empty color. Click the paint bucket. And now when you click on that green, Ta-da! We have a perfectly cut out star. Very hard to do if we just use those bitmap tools. So what we did is we took in a photograph, converted it to vector, drew a vector shape on the outside of the star, and then converted it back to bitmap to merge it all together and erase just the green. Really cool. And now I can move that star into position on the stage But there's a problem. To really get a sense that it's a star, we should show most of the star. We are only able to show part of it, and it's obstructing some other things. So what I think we should do, let's use the shortcut so we can see the whole stage again. I think we should make the star smaller. It doesn't need to be as large as it is. Maybe we want to make Anne Frank a little bit larger. So the star a little bit smaller and Frank a little bit larger. There are tools for that. The grow tool and the shrink tool are side by side, right above our green flag and our stop button. 
So I'm going to grab the shrink tool and then I can click, 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 click on that star until I get it the size that I want. You're the artist, so you can decide which size works best. And in Scratch, it's really easy to change your mind later and adjust that size. If that's a little bit too small, I'll just go to the Grow tool. And click, 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 click. And maybe if I move off the star, it goes back to a Select tool, then I can click and drag into place. Like so. So now we have a diary, we have a bookshelf, we have a girl that's been cut out so that we just see her, not the background color that was there, and a star that's really precisely created. We still have one blank image back there. Since Anne Frank and her family hid in a house, it's natural that we would have part of that house in the background. So let's click on the house photograph spray. Now this is actually not the Anna Frank house. I've been there, now I know. The statue is nearby, but for now, we're just gonna put it in there because we just need to see a wall. It's not so important that it's exactly the right house. That's the change that you could make on your own. So I need to unhide it. I'll click show and see we're seeing very little of it. So then we could drag it into position, drag it into position so we're seeing the part of the photograph that we want, not the ground or the sidewalk. Maybe we want to see part of a window and the bricks. Now before we use that trick to bring things to the front using a block, so let's go back to scripts. We're still in the looks category. There is no go to back, but we have go back layers. You can say how many layers back to go, so you can arrange things exactly the way that you want. So I'm gonna change that one. I'll click on the one. Since I have five photographic layers, I'll say five. Go back five layers. And then I'll click it once and it will go all the way to the back. And that's perfect. I don't really need to make any more changes to that one. I think this is enough. Let's make Anne Frank just a little bit larger since we have room. And I might want to drag that diary so that we can see her picture if possible. We have room. But I don't want the diary to go all the way to the back or it's also going to be underneath the house in the background. So let's say go back. We'll just use that one layer and click one at a time until it's where we want it. So click once, twice, three times. Perfect. So now we have our diary, our bookshelves, Anne Frank, the star, and part of a house. But remember how Anne Frank was partly transparent before? This is where we can use a little more code. But now we need to build a script. We need to put a few blocks together to make sure that whenever anyone clicks on the green flag, Anne Frank becomes transparent. So we can see a little bit through the other images behind her. It makes it look like a professional collage. It's something that's very easy to do in digital and very hard to do when you're using regular photographs to make them transparent. I don't know how to do that in the real world. I don't have a wand to do stuff like that, but I can do it with Scratch. So I need to go back to where I see all the sprites, click on the Anne Frank sprite, and in the events category, we should start with when green flag clicked. So I'll click and drag that block over. I'm just zooming in so you can see the blocks better. When green flag clicked, we want to change the transparency, the ability to see through that sprite. In the looks category, we have all of our effects. And one of those effects, if I click on the pull down menu, Shows me all the effects available. The final one is ghost. Ghosting allows you to partially see through. But if I click the green flag now, nothing's going to happen. I need the effect to be more than zero to see it. 
So if I set it to 100, that's the maximum for any effect, click the green flag, and Frank disappears entirely. So we know we don't want it to be zero, and we don't want it to be 100. Let's try 50, right in between. Click the green flag. Transparent, but now she's too transparent. She really seems like a ghost. That's not the effect that I'm looking for. I want to show her blending into her environment, but not disappearing in it. So I think maybe we try something like 15. Just a little bit more, 20. Green flag. Perfect. Now we have this blending happening, and some of that background white is becoming somewhat transparent. There's a little bit extra white here that looks like a highlight. I find that a bit distracting, so I'll just go back into costumes and zoom in on that area on the right. And yeah, now I do see there is some extra background. So I'll grab the eraser, adjust the size down to be more precise, click and drag, and as soon as I let go of the trackpad or mouse button, I can automatically see it on the stage. I'll do it a little bit more here. That's better. So art is all about this process of making small changes that gradually built up to a really cool work of art. In this case, we have a collage that shows history instead of just writing about history. And we show that we know a little bit about Anne Frank because of the images that we choose and how we combine them together. We didn't put brick house in the front. What's more important is what's inside the house, those elements that are there. Now, the final thing that we should do is we can adjust how bright certain images are and maybe make certain images darker. So that helps to have our foreground and our background. Because Anne Frank is in the foreground, I think we should make her a little bit brighter. And I just like that idea of making this really intelligent, heroic girl a little brighter. So I'll add another effect, same block, but instead of set ghost, I'm gonna set brightness. And let's just try 20. We don't want her to be really bright or she'd be completely white. So I'll click the green flag. Do you see the difference? I'm gonna remove that and click the green flag so you can really see it. Kind of dark. Brighter. I really like that. It really makes her stand out a little bit better against the dark things in the background. But now look at that house in the bottom corner. The house is a little too bright. It's pulling attention. I think we want it to be a little bit more in the background. So I'll click the house photo add a when green flag clicked from the events category. And under looks, I'm going to add the same block, set effect, change it to brightness. But instead of being over zero, we want it to get darker, so I'm going to use negative numbers. Let's try negative 20. We use positive 20 for, for Anne Frank. We're going to try negative 20 for the house. I'll click the green flag. That's pretty good. I don't want it so dark that I can't tell what it is, but I like that now we've got a good balance. We have some things that are a little bit darker in the back, some things that are a little bit brighter in the front. We could adjust the Star of David too if we want. In fact, if you want to add transparency to the Star of David, there's a really easy way to do it. If I click on Anne Frank, I can copy her scripts to another sprite by just clicking on the top block and dragging onto the other sprite, in this case, the Star of David. Now, when I click the green flag, they're both transparent. Now, that star is a little too transparent and a little too bright. I think I want to remove the brightness and lower that ghost effect to maybe 10. So again, small steps, you gradually develop something that looks really artistic. 
So now, go and take these principles. These techniques can be used to make any kind of collage that you want. You could also use some of these techniques in your video games. Video games have different layers too. If you're making a platform game, you want your platforms behind your characters so you can see your characters. But if you have a bush or something, you might want the bush to be in front of your character so the character can hide from things. So think about how you can compose different parts of your game or different parts of your animation as you're making a short animation. And the more of these techniques you use, you might find you're growing as an artist and your work looks better and better. So thanks, and please remember to share your work. Share your work by clicking that share button so that everybody can not only see it, but if they want, they can see inside, check out the scripts you used, and even remix it and make it their own. Scratch on.